Hello everyone, welcome to my presentation on doing Go with eBPF. This will be a gentle introduction. My name is Michael Mullen and let's get started. So the agenda today is that uh, I'm going to show you how to set up Go from uh, a green machine, a machine that hasn't had any, uh, that isn't ready to, to do this yet. Uh, I will show you the important documentation on doing eBPF with Go. I've then got a sample application um, where I will go through some of the eBPF code and I will go over the Go code. After all of that, um, we can Dockerize this application and I can show you how to, do that, how to do that as well. So the end result of what we're gonna do is if we, Um, I've compiled up, I've done all the compilation, all the um, all the, the dockerizing stuff like that, and I've ran the application in a Docker container. And you can see that um, what this application does is it tells us whenever exec VE has been called. So right now you can see that a, a program called XDG Screensaver is calling um, user bin move, and it's pro this is its process ID and it's telling us what CPU it did this on. So let's, uh, let me open up a new shell for you and I'm gonna run bash. So you can see, you can see these things happening and in bash, I'm gonna ask, who am I? So you can see bash ran, who am I? LS, bash ran LS. And if I start up the Brave browser, you can see that Brave is doing all this, this interesting stuff here as well. So yeah, it's just a little sample ap application scraping everything that goes through, through the exec VE system call. So how do we set everything up uh, to do this? On Fedora, it's a pretty simple process. You just need to install a few dependencies here and you're ready to go. If you're running Ubuntu, um, you won't be able to find BPF tool. You'll have to install uh, Linux tools common instead. Uh, sorry, and uh, yeah, and um, BPF-devel might be called uh, libbpf-dev instead. Um, now there's a few dependencies for Go that the application needs, but uh, the Go compiler gets them themselves from our makefile. Um, uh, and these things are from the Cilium project. They are the, the libbpf uh, stuff that we need to do. So yeah, uh, everything, all of that is inside of the makefile here. So we don't need to worry about that right now. So I've got a brand new um, uh, Fedora machine here running, um, running in a virtual machine and I will show you how to set everything up here. So you just need to open up a terminal. Um, let's make, let's make a directory called code and let's sudo dnf install clang go make lib bpf devel and bpf pool. And while those are getting installed, there is sample a sample application that I have on my GitHub repository. So if we go into github.com and let's search for my username, which is mazmullen2000. Uh, okay, github. Asmolin two thousand, and under my repositories, you will find this BPF with Go. So click on code, put that into your clipboard, and inside of code, we want to git clone that repository. Now, if we enter into this. 
and you will see that there is um, the initial directory has a bunch of stuff for doing the Docker stuff. Let's not worry about that right now. Let's go right into the app. So the app you will see has a make file. It has source and it has, um, it has some source files. It's got a make file and it's got this go.mod. And if we take a look at go.mod, you'll just see it's basically saying we need to grab this stuff as we, uh, we start programming. So let me run the make file here. And our application is created and it's called execve scrape. And if we run that, uh, the same similar thing to how we how I demonstrated this first. If I open up a new window, you'll see you'll see processes being run um, because I ran them. Um, so yeah. Uh, What's next? So there's an, some important documentation that you should have if you're wanting to, to do this um, Go eBPF programming. That documentation is in these four areas. Uh, the first one is the Cilium GitHub repository itself. And in that repository, it has links to um, the Go documents. So how you use the, the Go functions. And we will find that over here. So if you go into the Cilium area, um, this is where they link to their documentation. So all of this is important here. Um, in this demo, we'll be using these three things. Um, uh, the next uh, important area for documentation is the BPF helper man pages. And these are the helper functions that you call inside of your BPF code. So you can find those at the man pages online or on your machine if you just type uh, man BPF dash helpers. Um, so this is important uh, to look up all the various helper functions that you can use. Um, if that documentation isn't quite detailed enough for you, you can look into the uh, BPF compiler collection reference guide now, this isn't a exact matching to the libbpf stuff that we're doing. BCC is different from libbpf, but there's so much overlap that it's still a useful um, area for you to look things up in. So if we go into the BCC reference area, you'll see that they've got a bunch of uh, documentation here on various things, and there's a lot more information about how to use these things. And the last area of um, documentation that's important is the kernel BPF self-tests. So in the kernel BPF self-tests, um, you'll find all the, um, the testing application that kernel developers have written to help them test out all the features of BPF. And you can go in and see how they did certain things uh, as example references. So for example, I'm interested in this um, NS current PID TID, uh, PID TGID, uh, and this, this new function um, will allow us to get the, uh, the PID and TGID out of a container's namespace, a container's PID namespace. So um, I haven't gone, I haven't looked at this other than seeing that it exists, but this is, uh, I'm going to be looking at this later on tonight to see how uh, I can get the PID identifier for um, things that are being run in a container namespace. Um, and there's a lot more, a um, lot more examples inside of these self-tests for you to use as well. So let's take a look at the code. Um, uh, the BPF code is a simple execve scraper. Um, and this code, because it's written with libbpf, it's going to work with any libbpf, um, any libbpf uh, language that uses libbpf, such as C, C++, and Rust. Now, for Rust, there's a simple one-line addition 
that I, I actually already have in this code. Um, and let me show it to you. So here's the code on the left here. This is the, the BPF code that I'm writing. And you'll see that there is this one line here that is specific for libbpf. It's not going to hurt any of the other languages. It's just that libbpf rs needs this line uh, to help it create its skeletons. Um, I've detailed how to do um, BPF programming in Rust in a previous video. So yeah, uh, this program is pretty simple. All it's doing is that um, we're getting the PID um, and populating that into um, this structure of data, this structure of data that we have defined up here. Uh, so this structure of data is going to contain the PID, the, the name of the process being called, so the target of the exec VE, and the COM, which is the process calling exec ve so in here i'm getting the pid and populating that into the structure i'm getting the file name and i'm populating that into the structure and i'm getting the com and i'm populating that into the structure now there is one last thing here that i didn't explain that i should go back and explain uh, the way in which i got the file name is that because i am using a trace point to gather information I'm using um, this structure that I have previously defined as exec VE entry args type. And I have made that type myself. Now you should be asking, how did you go about making this type? Where did you get the information on how to do that? And in, uh, so for every trace point, there is documentation on how to use that trace point. So inside of this uh, area of sys kernel tracing events, you'll find um, um, documentation and on all of the trace points. Um, since I am using sys enter exec ve inside of the sys calls enter exec ve, you'll find a file called format. And if you open up that format file, you'll see it tells you all of the, the information that you can get out of this trace point. I want these, I only want the file name right now, um, but we can also get the args that, are, that is being passed into the um, exec VE trace call and the environment variables being passed into the exec VE trace call. Uh, so the way in which you, you get the, the file name is you look for the offset of this file name. So the offset is 16. So 16 bytes into the structure, you will find the start of file name. So 16 bytes is 128 bits. So that's why in this structure, I am having two unused 64-bit integers. So 264 equals 128 and then we can start up from the file name. So I think that gives you an idea of how to um, create your entry args while you're doing trace points. So that's how I got the file name. I just copied it into exec data f name. And the last thing that I do, or the second to last thing that I do, is I put onto this uh, perform, uh, perf event array, um, that data. And the way in which you do that is you uh, BPF perf event output, you give the name of the, the map, the, the perf event array, and then you give your data, as well as the current CPU running this, um, this BPF code. Uh, the, and then for good measure to the trace pipe, I print hello world. So um, yeah, it's a fairly simple exec VE scraper, nothing, nothing um, out of the ordinary here uh, using trace points. So the Go code, how does the Go code work? Well, there's a few things that I need to highlight about this Go code. The first thing is that there is a Go generate line and this Go generate line tells the Go compiler to go compile up that um, BPF code 
and turn it into a byte array for our Go, um, our Go source to import and use. Um, now, the other thing that you should be aware of is that Go is capitalization sensitive for its public versus private items. Um, so there's a few different things here that might catch you up if you don't pay attention to capital capitalization. So for example, here is the Go version of that structure from, from, this, from the BPFC code. So this is equal to this. And you'll notice that all of the fields have been capitalized. Now I could capitalize them here as well, but I find that to be a bit of a pain. So um, yeah. Um, so these, these three fields need to be capitalized or you won't be able to access them inside of your Go code. Um, the next thing uh, that you need to be aware of is this go generate line. So this go generate line tells the, the BPF compiler to run BPF to go, um, and it tells it where to get BPF to go. It tells, and then BPF to go then runs Clang to generate an object file from our C source code. And this object file is compiled up into BPF machine code. Um, so we could have actually ran this ourselves, but there's a, a little bit more that the, the BPF to go does after this. Um, after it compiles up the, the, the source code, the BPF source code into an object file, it's then going to, um, and this tells it to, to ensure that it's doing x86 object machine code here, uh, rather than ARM machine code. If we left this out, it would compile, if we did this, it would compile both ARM uh, machine code good for ARM and machine code good for x86. But I just want x86 code right now. Um, so what it's gonna do is it's, it's going to take the name that we told Clang to make here this gen exec ve and bpf to go is going to take the object file being generated and this name here and generate skeletons for us um you have to be aware of the the naming scheme of the the um the skeletons that you're making because again there is some capitalization weirdness going on here so because I've called it gen exec ve, gen underscore exec ve, um, it's going to generate some objects for us to use. And these objects are that, that name that I gave up here, and then objects. So if I were to change this to just exec ve, we would need to change our source code to this. Uh, now, uh, there is also another piece of code here that's important. This load gen exec ve objects. So this is actually going to um, populate our objects properly. And notice that the G is capitalized in this case rather than lowercased. Um, so this is important for you to, to observe. Um, now everything else is is straightforward. Um, notice this stuff, and I'll I'll get into the skeleton in just a moment. Uh, but let's pretend that the skeleton. Well, let's not pretend the skeleton's all loaded up properly, and we've got we've got our trace point ready to go here, and that's what this link trace point does. Uh, what we will then do after creating our trace point with the objects from our skeleton is that we will create um, a reader object into the perf buffer um, that we stated here was the event perf buffer. So we're going to create a reader for that, that perf buffer here. And then what we're going to do is a forever loop reading from that perf buffer and grabbing the event. Now this EV isn't 
isn't this yet. This EV is not yet this. This EV is um, a type, a type of um, object in in the um, the BPF Go code. Um, and if we go to the documentation, let's go to the Cilium documentation for Perf, and we've got this um, reader. And this new reader will create for us um, this reader. Okay, it's not going to tell us much here. Um, so yeah, you'll uh, um, you'll have to look around for this information that I'm about to give you. But what it does is it it creates an object um, that has um, the number of lost samples. So if we're if we're running our BPF code so quickly that we start to miss events going into our um, our perf our perf uh, event um, our perf ring buffer, sometimes our ring buffer will overflow and we will notice that we've lost samples. So this EV will tell us how many lost samples we, we have. It will tell us the CPU that the BPF program ran on, and it gives us a raw sample of bytes that contains this structure. So what we need to do is take that raw, raw bytes and uh, transform it into our the data that we can use. So we do that by using binary.read, and we pass in um, the bytes after we convert we convert it from this raw information into bytes, um, and then we read based on Little Indian. And um, x86 is a Little Indian machine, and that's why we use Little Indian here into our structure. After we have everything in our structure, we, we can then print it out on the command line. So on CPU, and the information from the CPU from the read, um, we ran on CPU 07, com, which might be bash, ran the PID, and the the function or the um, the executable that it called. So again, let me run the ac application for you. So on CPU seven, pollkit D ran this PID with this um, with and it executed that file. So yeah, it's it's pretty simple to get you up and running with with um, Go and BPF. That's all you need to do here: uh, a 68 line Go program and a 54 line uh, C++ uh, BPF program or C BPF program. Uh, so yeah, now the next step that we want to do is let's Dockerize it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use all my Linux to compile up that Docker um, application that we just did in Fedora. Um, and then um, and then we have it, then we're ready to go. So let's take a look at some of the ways I'm doing, uh, some of the code I'm using to Dockerize this application. So here is the Docker file that I've got. And I also want to show you a make file I also want to show you the make file that I use to make everything a little bit easier for myself. So in this make file, what we're doing is we're going to do a Docker build of execve scrape. And then we're going to use this um, after we've built the image. So we've got the image all ready for us. After we've built the image, I'm going to uh, pull out, I'm going to create a container based on that image, 
copy out the application onto my hard drive and then delete the container. I'm then going to save the image into a tar.gz file. So uh, pretty simple here, but let's take a look at what the Docker file does. The Docker file is going to use Alma Linux and then do that install process that we did on Fedora, and then it's going to compile it up. After it's compiled it, um, we're going to create um, another image based on Scratch, which is just an empty image that you can build on that has nothing in it. And I'm going to copy from this Alma Linux image, the exec VE scrape application, and I'm gonna put it inside of the Scratch container. Now this command call says, when you run this container, run this application. Now there's one last thing here uh, that is a little, that might trip you up if you're not using the make file. Before running this build, we're creating the VM Linux on the host, not inside of Docker. And the reason why we're doing that is because um, in order to generate the VM Linux.h file, <clears throat> your Docker image needs access to syskernel BTF VM Linux. Um, and configuring that, configuring Docker to get access to that is a little bit of a little bit of a pain. So instead of doing that in Docker, we're doing that on the host. So the steps to do that, the steps to Dockerize this is to simply in the, the BPF with Go area. Let me first make sure I'm nice and clean here. Uh, all that you need to do, and in fact, let's do this on the, uh, the virtual machine. All that I need to do here is I'm going to make sure that my, um, my Go program is nice and clean. And then I'll be in the, the BPF with Go directory that has the Docker file and the make me that the, the make file that I just showed you. And I'm just going to do a make build. Why didn't it like that? Because I don't have Docker installed. So there is one last thing that we need to do. We have to get Docker installed. So sudo dnf install Docker. And then let's run Docker. So sudo system, system control start Docker. And um, because my user that I'm using inside of this virtual machine isn't part of the Docker group, I'm gonna have to run this through sudo. So sudo make build. So right now it's going through this stuff and it's using this uh, Docker file to do it. All right, so we've got our output to that is the exec VE scraper, so I can run that without Docker. Um, this is a copy of the image, um, so we can uh, Docker load that onto a different machine without having to run that whole script again. And of course, in Docker images, you will find that exec VE scraper image ready to be run. So let's give that a run. Now I could either do a Docker run 
um, IT and a bunch of parameters here, but I always forget how to do that. So instead I put it into my make file and it is make docker, make run D, run docker. So it is up and running. And if I start up a new window here and do some stuff, you'll see that um, this container has printed out the information that we just did. So let's uh, make ourselves nice and clean here. And so we've, we've deleted, we no longer have that. We no longer have that exec VE, um, uh, Docker image to run anymore, but because we've got this exec scrape .tar .gz, we can get the image from that. So let's do a sudo docker load dash i exec scrape tar .gz. And then you'll notice that we've got the exec scrape there and we can do a uh, Docker run privileged, and it's called exec scraper. And of course we have to be sudo. Why did it not like that? Exec scrape, not scraper. All right, and there we go, we're running again. And we're scraping stuff. All right, so that's it. Where um, I've shown you everything that you need to know in order to get started using EP eBPF with Go. And I've shown you a little bit extra on how you can create Docker images uh, to do um, eBPF with Go. So say you wanted to do start doing some um, Kubernetes stuff and you needed an image to put in your Kubernetes cluster. Now you can start using eBPF in Kubernetes. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you've learned something about Linux and I hope you have a good day.